Description. Hey everybody, my name is Brendan Noble and I'm a young adult author. Today we're going to be talking about blurbs or Amazon descriptions or whichever storefront you're talking about. It's the description of your book and how to write it. We know it's every writer's worst nightmare and I've been dealing with rewriting some of my blurbs this past week and my wife can attest to how much I've complained about the process and how difficult it can be. So today I'm gonna to be talking about a few different tips for how to write your blurb and make it better. My first tip is to pick up Brian Kaplan's How to Write a Sizzling Synopsis. Uh, it's a, I'm not paid to say this, but it's an amazing book. Uh, it's really helped mine and to be able to uh, go over a lot of in-depth topics that blurb writing that you wouldn't think about. I mean, you only got 150 to 200 words to write in your blurb, but they can be a lot packed into it and a lot of work to be able to get your story into such a short period. So I really recommend that book. It goes over a lot of important things, some of which I'm going to talk about today, but I can't go into the amazing detail that he goes into. I can attest to how much it helped my writing and my blurb, and I really think you should look it up as well. It's only $2.99 on Amazon, I believe, and that's a really good deal. Point number two is to focus on characters, not just the plot. So this is something that's really important in writing as well as just in your blurb and the book, but this is something that fails often when people are talking about their blurb. They tend to write a summary of what happens in their book in 200 words instead of trying to convince you to buy the book. This is a thing where blurb writing is marketing copy. This is an ad for your book and you're trying to convince someone to sell it. You're not trying to summarize the book to the person. You're trying to convince them to buy it. And those are two very different things. With one of those, you'd be just describing every event in a quick summary and the other, you're trying to entice them to read more. You're living them on a last string or convincing them to keep reading. And a big part of this is focusing on characters and not just your plot. See, people get invested in characters as people. They don't just get invested in the world. And as much as that can be interesting, you don't need to describe your entire magic system or your sci-fi universe in the blurb. What you really need to get to is attach the reader to a character's motivations and their struggle, because that's what people can relate to, and we wanna be able to see the character, what they're struggling with, and how they're going to overcome that or what they're facing. And that is the powerful thing. Leave the per, uh, person on the understanding of what the character is trying to accomplish and you'll get them to keep reading if they can relate to it. You can have a lot of world building in there, if, but a world was not gonna make someone wanna read the book. There's a lot of great worlds out there, but if there's not characters that can relate to, it's not going to be an entertaining read. You can have great characters also in your book, but if you don't describe that in the blurb, no one's gonna know that. Point number three is don't describe every subplot. This relates to the last point a bit, but a focus on character. But here, you wanna be able to just take a big overview of what happens. You do need a little bit of plot in your blurb, but don't focus on every subplot. You might wanna pick one or two little things that you can hint at, such as a romance in a book that's not a major romance book that might have a romance subplot. Maybe a little bit of hints at some other things that might occur or side conflicts that might entice a reader. But don't delve into all of these. Those are for what the book is for. Unless the subplot is going to help people think that this is going to be a book they want to buy, don't put it out there. It can be a great thing to put in your book, but the blurb, again, you only have 150 to 200 words. You've got to be very careful in what you put there, and it needs to be the meat and bones of your book, not the other stuff that might make your book interesting, but wouldn't make for an interesting blurb. And a huge part of that is because with blurb writing, you're trying to focus on tension. It does not matter what the genre is, as long as it's a fiction genre, you're trying to get attention why is the character struggling? What are they going through? You want the reader to be already invested in the book before they even pick it up and hit that buy button. If they can feel that tension, if they can relate to the whatever conflict is happening in the book before they've even started reading it, that's huge and that's gonna get, get them to click that buy button. So keep the tension high and often focusing on subplots can take away from the tension. Unless it adds to that, I don't recommend including them. And point number four is I'm gonna metaphorically call kill your babies. 
this one sounds terrible, but what it actually is is you want to include all the flowery words or language in your book, maybe include a quote or two of the, your favorite quote from the book, but unless it is really diving into increasing that tension that we were talking about, do not include it because you're going to just distract the reader. While a lot of those things can be awesome and are good inside of your book, a marketing copy blurb is very different than writing. Marketing copy is punchy, it's quick, to the point, and it's not the same thing as the long, flowy writing you might write with. No matter what your writing style, marketing copy will often be written differently than the actual book, and that's okay. And you need to make sure that those are two different mindsets, and this is why writers often struggle with writing marketing copy. We're really good at writing 80,000 words. We're really bad at writing 200. So we need to understand that and kill those little things where we add on. Keep the, give the reader enough to know what's happening and to see if they'll be interested and then move on. Do not focus and sit on a point. You want everything to be punchy, quick to the point and keep, it keeps increasing that tension that we were talking about earlier. Do not let that go just to be flowery with your words. And point number five is for last and that's a good reason and that's keep the reader hooked at the end with an important question or something that's gonna be in their mind thinking about what that needs to be answered. If you're writing a thriller novel that is does he get the bad guy or does he get killed in the process? Is If it's a romance novel, does he get the girl? Does she get the guy? If it's a dystopian novel, do they take down the government? If it's a fantasy, do they get the magic ring shiny thing and throw it into a volcano? Wonder what that reference is from. If you've done a good job building up the tension up to this point, readers are going to be already hooked and you just need to convince them with one last punch to hit that buy button. And that leaving them with one important question that they can't stand not having answered is the way to do that. It's a thing in our psychology, and if you can build that tension up to one question, then you're going to be very successful. And even if you're in a smaller niche genre, you can convince a lot of people to buy your book. And so that is going to be a very powerful thing for marketing. Even It doesn't necessarily have to be a question, but it has to be something where the reader is left thinking about that topic and they can't get it out of their mind. A question is a great way to do that. There's a lot of other ways to do it. Again, I recommend Brian Kaplan's book for that. A lot of people seem to think this is the most important thing, but honestly, it's not. It's the finisher. You need to have all the buildup and to be able to have a finisher. A terrible movie with a good ending is still a terrible movie, but a good movie with a great ending is a great ending. Psychologically, people remember the peak of something and the end of something. And because a blurb is short, make sure that end is amazing because then they'll go and read your book. Because the end of your blurb was great, it's got them thinking, they have to read it. Especially if something of a low price book or Kindle Unlimited, a lot of voracious readers will pick up your book because of this, so really have to take advantage of it. Do not underestimate the impact of your blurb and making sure uh, it's good. A cover gets them close, but the blurb finishes the deal. And the last sentence of your blurb really finishes the deal. So make sure you finish it off on the right foot. Well, that's all I have for you guys today on descriptions and blurbs. If you have any questions on these, because I know it's a difficult topic, go ahead and shoot me a message or down in the comments below. I'd love to help out however I can. This is a really difficult topic and it really helps to get a lot of feedback on some of your blurb ideas. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe down below. I'll be coming out with new videos every Friday to address the topics that you're worried about or concerned about in your writing.